everybody, I'm Mr. Walsh. I'm Mr. Weingrad. His hand. <laughs> and we're going to introduce you to some of the glassware that you're going to be using this year for um, in the chemistry lab. Uh, and behind us, not behind us here, but there is behind us, but on the screen you'll notice that there's the check-in sheet that describe, that has the names of all of the, the pieces of glassware. Yep. And you will see those things during lab. Yes, you will. Um, so um, we'll take a minute and not only tell you what they are and show them to you, but then tell people what they are used for. Yeah, what they do. Yeah. What's your of... job? Glassware yeah. or otherware? Right, right. Um, so there's three major types of, three major categories of glassware. Genres. Were, genres, yeah. Um, one type of glassware are things actually made out of glass. Okay, so this is a flask, but... Um, so that's cool. And then there are things that are made out of metal, like these forceps or tweezers. And then there are things that are made out of um, ceramics, like this ceramic tile. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh ceramics. Um, so typically at the very beginning of the check-in, we'll clean the glass things and the... <laughs> that hand, right? We'll clean the glass and the ceramic stuff. See? Here. here there, there's my face. Um you don't have to clean the metal stuff, just so you know. Okay, so uh, so let's get started. Yeah, let's look at all the fun stuff. So the first thing on the list is this burette clamp. Okay, the burette clamp is kind of an interesting thing because what we use that for is to clamp things. I'm sure that that was difficult to get, but you can take this and you can like take a this thing and put it in here, and then you can tighten that and now you have this and you support it on a ring ring stand thing in the lab so that's this is a burette clamp gorgeous next up we have this wonderful ceramic tile yes beautiful ceramic tile it's nice and square and you can rest hot things on it so if i had a hot hot material it would sit on this pretty much like a coaster in your house yes and then um we go with a clay triangle so it is triangular there it is woo okay and this is to put things in a bunsen burner without actually putting it directly you put things and support them uh, mr weingrad can show how a crucible goes right in there yes crucible next up on our list fits right into our clay triangle it sits there perfectly oh it's a little cup a little cup for science and it sits beautifully in our clay triangle. So the crucible comes with its cover. So we will cover our crucible. You wanna, um, and the crucible is used to heat different substances. So if I wanted to heat something up, I would put it in my crucible, put the crucible in the triangle, lid on, Oh, it's ready for science. Right. And then we can actually take this and we can use the crucible tongs and we take the crucible tongs to pick up crucibles. Now, science says that we shouldn't pick it up necessarily like this, but that's the way we're going to do it in this class. Okay. Don't get fooled by the little hole here to pick up a crucible like this and backhand and drop. This, this is the most expensive piece of glassware in your drawer. So, um, and you are financially responsible for glassware once you check it in. So, okay, so that's the crucible tongs and all of that good stuff. Keeping it rolling with our ceramics, we have our evaporating dish. Very lovely. Your evaporating dish is basically a ceramic dish with a little pour spout. Check out that cute little pour spout. Oh my goodness. And it's good for, like its name says, evaporating things. So if we had a liquid and we wanted to evaporate that liquid, throw it in your evaporating dish, good to go. We'll heat it up. Okay, and so this is a flask. This is an Erlenmeyer flask. There are several types of flasks, but this Erlenmeyer flask um, is here. And then I'm going to um, show you something really quick about these flasks okay you'll see on a flask that there are graduations okay this is a 250 mil flask and they're also on beakers but it's only labeled up to 225 the other 25 comes in for things above and beyond that. So this is a 250 mil flask but up to here is only 225. So know that yeah, it only goes up to 225 milliliters, but it's actually the 250 milliliter flask. If I may just clarify also, Go ahead. Uh, you said the graduations, those refer to these little markings, the ticks, if you will, 
on there, um, in case you're not familiar with that term, graduations. Yeah, graduations, which we're all trying to attend after <laughs> after your senior year of high school, but you can't see it very well when I do that. Okay, go ahead. Uh, keeping it rolling, we've got our good friends we saw earlier. The forceps are metallic friends. Forceps are very good for picking things up. You can use them like a tweezer. Tweezer is another name we could use for this tool. Good for grabbing things, right. particularly things you don't want to touch with your fingers. And then we have a funnel and... I won't insult your intelligence by telling you what we do with the, the funnel, right? <laughs> like, okie doke. All right, getting really exciting, we have our gas lighter. So we're going to use this tool to light a Bunsen burner. And you can see when I squeeze it, it creates a spark that is sufficient to light the fuel of a Bunsen burner. Yeah, and then we have these glass plates. Um, these are in your drawer for utilitarian reasons. Maybe you want to, like, get close to something but protect your eyes even more than goggles will do that. Um, whatever you want to do. So... You know, there's a bunch of these different sizes. So that's cool, right? I Very cool. Oh, that's the coolest. That's the coolest. Stuff. We've got, um, coming up next, our graduated cylinder. So this is a 50 milliliter graduated cylinder. And very similar to that flask it has, as its name might suggest, it has graduations um, on it. So on this one, we have 10, 20, 30 milliliters marked all the way up to 50 milliliters. Um, and in between are ticks or graduations, so you can measure accurately how much of a liquid you have. Can I clarify one thing on that? Please do. So this little round thing is always something that people get annoyed by. It is <laughs> yeah. silly. And you, don't know. you know what it's for is so that when you're do using a graduated cylinder in class and then you hit it over, it's to keep it from breaking because all this glassware is expensive. So when you drop it, it doesn't actually break the... <laughs> the glassware. So try to keep that collar on it. You know, in all of my years as a chemist, I had never learned that. Oh, hey, see, you learn something new every day. Learn well, something new. You do. Most I, days. I never do. I <laughs> know Mr. it Boss all. Boss knows everything. Right, know it all um, Well, keeping it <laughs> rolling, <laughs> we have our wonderful friend, the mortar and pestle. And this is a this is one of my favorite pieces of labware. Uh -huh. The mortar and pestle is wonderful if we wanted to crush something up. We have two hard pieces of ceramic, and by mashing them together, we can pulverize all sorts of substances into fine powders. And then there's a whole bunch of beakers. And so I guess you guys know what beakers are, but much like the flask, you know, it's this container, but much like the flask, there's graduations on them. Okay. Focus. And, yeah. Focus, I say. There it goes. Okay, so this is the 50 milliliter flask. It says so right here, but it's only graduated to 40 because of the 50. It's at 50 is beyond 40. So it's just how they do it. Yeah. So and then there's varying sizes of this sort of bucket-looking thing. You know, they call them science cups. Yeah, they're yeah science cups. Okay, good. Um, very scientific. So you call them science cups. Uh, we have our rubber policeman here. Who if this would focus? It's basically a glass rod that has a rubber section on the tip. So this is useful for transferring substances maybe out of your beaker or flask but the rubber section is useful for moving substances around and that's attached to a stirring yes, rod a glass rod yeah and that's and so those are those two things and then um these test tubes that's this you guys probably know what a test tube is um we use those they come in different sizes and this is the only thing that you can not on purpose break in our lab and not get charged for so there's actually a lab where you're going to have to uh, do an experiment and break the test tube on purpose. Holy you're God. not going to have to get charged for that. So that's a test tube, and you should have a whole bunch of these in your drawer. Um, for the test tubes, we also have this wonderful test tube brush. Focus, I say. There it is. Uh, the test tube brush is perfectly sized for scrubbing your test tube to make sure it's nice and clean. Um, that's about all there is to say about that. It also works on our other pieces of glassware. There, that's not all to say there. I could clean a beaker very effectively. I could get in here and clean a flask. Oh my goodness. The, the uses for this test tube brush are actually endless. Cleaner, cleaner, cleaner. Always, okay, always yeah. the cleaner. And then when we take this, we take a test tube again, a lot of this has to do with test tube, but there's this metal thing that squeezes, and that is a test tube holder, okay? And so um, it's, some people call it a test tube clamp, but I call it a test tube holder, not to be confused with the burette 
clamp so it's not conjuncting you know conjunctivitis no it's not conjunct so it's not like the same word getting you confused so this is a test tube holder used to hold a test tube when you don't want to actually hold it in your hand uh, hot 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 right. um speaking of hot 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 thanks buster poindexter <laughs> We've got our watch glass, who is uh, basically a circular but uh, lens-shaped uh, piece of glass. This piece of glass is good if you wanted to put a substance on it and watch it um, and be able to see very clearly. Um, it also serves kind of like our piece of uh, just square glass. We can use it to cover um, another piece of glassware. About it. And then the and then the last thing on this list is what we call wire gauze, which is kind of like the screen screening that's in your drawer. Um, and so this is good for just putting stuff on when you're trying to heat it up over a Bunsen burner. So anyway, yeah. So so we got you know, woo, but you'll have a ring and things like that. So that's what's good, what you're going to find in your regular um, in your lab drawer. But we also need to talk a little bit. So you're not going to do the AP bonus drawer unless you're in AP chemistry. And uh, there's a supplemental video for that. But there's also things in the end cabinet. So let's take a minute and go over um, those things. Does that sound good to you, Mr. That Madron? sounds super groovy. So this guy is everybody's favorite piece of lab equipment, the Bunsen burner. There's actually we're actually going to have a separate video about how to use a Bunsen burner, what to look for, and That's things great. like that. But this is the Bunsen burner, and it has a hose attached to it. Uh, this right here, oh my gosh, is a test tube rack. It uh, holds all your test tubes very nicely inside these holes. It's beautiful. Put them in it. And then there is this guy. This is actually two things in one, right, Mr. Weingard? Grad? Whatever. <laughs> Weingardstein. Yeah. Weingardstein. Yeah. Weingrad. <laughs> Weingrad. Right, right, right. I knew that, but I got nervous because I'm on camera. Uh. Okay. No, but uh, you have a ring here, which is removable. You can also put your burette clamp on it. Yes, you can. Right? And then you have the ring stand, which holds the ring. And then you can see what goes on from there. Make sure the stuff in the ring doesn't fall over. Right. Fall over or fall through. Fall through. Yeah, it's that's true. always good. The wire gauze goes really nice. Yes. Okay. Um, and last uh, that we're going to talk about is our friend. This is a digital balance. So we can put our samples that we're trying to weigh on top. I would have to remove this plastic cover. I'm not going to do that right now because I think it's going to come flying out at me. All right. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. Um, this uh, circular balance where you actually load your supplies will come flying out if it's at the wrong angle. <laughs> Every time you touch it, I'm just going to close it on you. <laughs> Snap my fingers! Um, but on the front, you will notice uh, that there is a digital readout spot, um, so it will tell you more or less the exact amount um, of substances that you have added to it. Right, and this balance isn't going to be actually in the end cabinet. It may be there stored, but we're going to keep them out probably on top of the balance, on top of the on top of the Balances on balances on balances. <laughs> on top of the table for the for a lot of the year. So, okay, so that's it. I, I think, think that's that, it. That, that goes over all the stuff. And sorry that it's a 13 minute video, but oh, yeah. you know, what you gotta, you do? yeah, you got to do what you got to do. So, hope we talked fast. Yeah, we did talk fast. Um, and I hope everybody has a great time with us, right? Yeah, Mr. Weingrad. it's gonna be the best. It,